Uh, welcome to the video. We're going to talk about carbon fork care. Talk about carbon fork care. We've got some carbon forks here, and Tasha's giving me the the fork eye. This is this is carbon forks, basically. This is carbon care. I'm going to show you how to. We'll talk about a bit about carbon bars. We're going to talk about torque wrenches. This is probably going to be, be the most comprehensive fork on YouTube for carbon forks. And if you know what something better, or if you got some advice, or you think I've fucked something up, let me know in the comment section below. First of all, just have a look at that. I'm not sure if you can see that there, but so those rings there. So that's all around the steerer. All right. So this is found in a bike that had a loose headset, and so what happens is the bearing, or sometimes the bearing gets sticky and just it etches out the carbon fork when you're turning. All right. So this guaranteed is going to snap and fail at some point. All right. So really good thing I picked this out. So if you've got a friend that's got a loose headset. You know, just drop your fork out now and then and just check. You know, check your, put your fingers in your bearings and just see if they spin or up. Right, this is basic care. A lot of bike shops don't even check for that. But that's just huge. And you know, this is a huge issue. So this would have caused a massive, can you imagine? You're riding along, basically, and you've got your fork, carbon fork, and you've got your, your stem on there. And all of a sudden, you're, you know, you're sprinting or hit a big bump and then pop. Now you've got your hands, you you know, you've got your handlebars in your hand and you, this is just snapped. So, you, potentially lethal. So, this can, this can happen to any fork, steel, alloy. So, it's always a good idea to chop your fork out every few months or after any big crash and just give it a really good inspection. Get like a little flashlight, a little left, and just sort of go over it like forensic, you know, and just stuff like that. Anything you're not too sure of, take it to your local shop, maybe get a second opinion and see what they say. So, yeah, or even send some photos to the manufacturer, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, this is otherwise known as the ring of death, the ring of death, and it is definitely very, very dangerous. This is this came out of a ten thousand dollar, you know, specialized tarmac S works, an older model. So yeah, this problem is a sleeping, sleeping beast, sleeping devil. All right, this is the ring of death. So keep an eye on that. But this fork, people say oh, you got to throw it out. No, no, no. This fork, all you have to do now, you can't use it on the same bike. All we do is get a carbon blade hacksaw. We get a fork guide, put that on there, line it up, screw it in. This is a fork cutting guide. And then we've got our little hacksaw. You can use whatever hacksaw you want, but it doesn't hurt to have a carbon specific tooth. And then you just put it through like that. Maybe put it in a bench vise or somewhere where it's solid. Home job for YouTube. And then we're just gonna cut through. And then that way this fork so basically this fork, we can put it on a smaller bike, all right? And now it's, now it's good to go again. Yeah, it's good to go. So we just cut off the dangerous part, it's good to go. So so much stuff just gets thrown into landfill and, and you know, carbon doesn't break down, man. So if we can reuse stuff or fix it, it's a better idea. You know, but so much stuff gets thrown to landfill, it's crazy, man. It is quite sad. So basically carbon forks, this is an inch and eighth. This is an inch and eighth. And I'll show you that, you know, this is how the bike industry creates market for itself. There's inch and eight. This is inch and eight straight. But it's sort of a, bit, a little bit flexy, isn't it? So they had a bit of issue with flex because everyone's going for lightweight. So then they bring out the, the tapered. So it's a little bit stiffer, but it's better steering, better steering response. So it's still one inch and eight at the top. Some people see it a bit flexy still. So Giant, another product there for people to grab is the, the overdrive, overdrive two steerer. So even stiffer and noticeably stiffer. And again, so, you know, is one better than the other, really? It's not. I mean, Lance Armstrong won all these Tour de France's on an inch and eighth, pretty much. So, another little tip to do for safety is get a torch and, and shine it down there. And you're, you, you're only looking for any like broken fibers, and it looks pretty clean in there. There's a bit of the bag in there still, which is pretty normal. But you're looking for any fibers that uh, have sort of like, you know, you, the steer should be perfectly circle. But if there's any fibers that are cracking in like that, you know, it's not really going to be. You know, potentially could be potentially dangerous so send those photos off to your manufacturer and see what they can do for you and again so what we'll do <coughs> quick safety check and there's a spider in there and that's about it but that looks pretty good it's a marita fork and again we'll give it the once over check around here we've taken the bottom bearing race off and just look for any cracks any sort of deformities and it all looks pretty pretty kosher there and again if you've got any doubts take it to your local shop and a good bike shop 
you know, would spend 30 seconds just going, yeah, it looks all right. You know, a good bike shop would do that for you for free, in my opinion. And again, with another thing of carbon care, you can use your Allen keys, but I also recommend using a torque wrench. This is done to five newton meters, which is basically little cheap ones, and they work, work fine, and you're just torquing it up. And when you're also, when you're doing, torque it up, that's, that's sort of my motto, isn't it? Torque it up. When you're doing uh, your stem bolts up on your fork steerer, you're basically doing it like, you know, snug it up, and then the top one, snug it up, and then again, you do eight turns, one, and then two, and then one, and then two. You're not just like winding one up and then winding one up. You're joining them together so that way it's an even clamping force on your steerer. Does that make sense? Slowly there. Oh, it's had a sneeze. And so there you go, that's what you do. So that's another thing, is just when you're using a torque wrench, just snug it up, snug it up, and then when it's snug, you're gonna go boom, and then boom, and then boom, and then boom, and then boom. And that's a little thing like that. It's a little thing that will prevent your carbon steerer from cracking prematurely which can be not only a waste of resources, a waste of money, but potentially really fucking dangerous for you or the guys and girls you ride with or the person who gets your bike after you. And I remember riding with, um, with, a, with a friend recently this year and her headset was loose. And I'm like, Tori, think your headset's loose still. And the, 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 the noob, other noob that she was riding was like, oh, no, nah, it should be right. It should be really good. And Tori's like, oh, I took it to the bike shop and it's all right. And it's like, whatever bike shop lets a loose headset go out, needs to learn how to do it, do a tight headset. So, you know, it, your headset shouldn't have one mil of movement in there. You know, it should be rock solid. Right? And another thing when you're, you know, this is, this is a safety 101. And a lot of, I know a lot of my young audience, they just like, they ride no gloves, no helmet, no care, whatever, black jersey, no lights at night, whatever. And they're sort of living dangerously. I get that. And I also like that when I was 20. But when you see some nasty accidents or you see someone in a wheelchair or you see someone with fucking broken teeth and shit like that, you're like, oh shit. You know, life is real. So your headset, you know, it shouldn't have any play in it. If it's got play, take it to your shop. Better yet, learn how to do it yourself. That's a lot safer because then you're relying on yourself to do something. Because I'll tell you what, a lot of shops out there, you know, they're busy or they've got work experience, kids doing stuff or they're just, you know, they're drunk or they're stoned or, or whatever, you know. So it's a good idea to learn how to do a headset. It's a pretty basic thing. It's a pretty basic thing. And how the headset plug works is... It basically goes into your fork steerer. It just drops in. We've got a DeRosa fork here. It just drops in like that. Yeah, drops in a little bit tight. So it drops in and it just protects it like that. So when your stem clamp comes around, it's protected from this steerer from getting crushed because that's, that's hollow in there, right? So if you have something around here and you look tight, that'll crush that. But if you've got a little plug in there, you know what I mean? This gives it extra strength. Can you see how that works? And so what a lot of, a lot of noobs do is they'll have this their steer up here but they'll have their stem uncut and i'll show you what i mean this is, this is really really fucking dangerous this is really dangerous so what they'll do they're riding along it's this all the time so the stem slammed like this they've got this, this little knob this little dong this little dick of carbon at the top and so their plug goes in about that deep right but what's ha what's happened to these this part here yeah it's, it's, the plug's going down that deep i'll show you exactly what i mean we'll just put this plug in we'll undo it and this is this is like a massive. This is noob. This is the, probably one of the biggest noob mistakes out there, uh, where people do their own bike mechanics without any awareness of what's going on there. They just it's, it does my head in. It does my head in. That's why I always tell people: cut your steerer, slam it, cut it. You know. Let's cut it. So we're going to slide this one in. This is all right. So we've undone that. So I'm going to slide in there. And so remember, this only goes down to that deep, all right? So look at that. Slide it in. Still a bit tight. Slide it in like that, okay? So, the, and then you have these spaces on top of that, and that's your frame there. And so what's protecting this part of the steer like that? And that's why you see on YouTube, crack carbon steer, you'll see people have ridden along, and they've hit a bump or done a sprint, and their steer is just snapped in half, and their big dental bill, et cetera, or whatever, you know, or they complain, oh, this, this my Trek bike broke, my Giant, my Specialized, my Hong Fu, my Deng Shwing, whatever Chinese carbon bike broke. But it's like, it wasn't the manufacturer's error. That was your error because you rode an uncut steerer. All right? Now, so what you want to do, let's say you're, you're not sure what setup you want to have, get a long plug, all right? Let's get a long plug. Do it, do it for me. And so like that drops in like that. So now your plug's protecting your steerer. All right? Isn't that a great idea? Why don't all bike manufacturers have this long plug in there? 
I don't know why they don't. This one's made by Colton Argo. Right, so it goes all the way down. So that gives a better protection. So that way your steel is not hollow where it needs support from the clamp there. Right, so again, if you disagree with this, let me know in the comment section down below. But for me, it seems like basic engineering. All right. But here's the thing. It looks stupid having that much steerer on top. If you've got more than a 5mm space on top of your stem, for me, it looks a bit dicky-dorky, especially if you're a road cyclist, maybe if you're gravel riding, touring, changing position, whatever. But if you're, like, if you're putting your bike on Instagram, please don't have it uncut like that. It, it just triggers me, all right? So if you're going to put your bike on Instagram, are you going to ride in the bunch? Are you going to ride with me? I'm not, I'm not going to talk to you if you've got that much steer out of there. Just kidding, but I'll see, I'll, I will tell you to cut it for safety perspectives, unless you've got one of these Colton Argos plugs in there. So this is all simple stuff that people aren't going to tell you, man. No one tells you this shit, though, do they? Like, people laugh behind your back or whatever, but they don't really, don't really generally tell you. I don't know why, because maybe people are scared of confrontation or, or they don't give a fuck, or they don't know. Who knows? Who knows? So that, that's basically uh, fork steerer 101, safety there, the things to look for, the loose headset, any cracks or dodgy looking stuff, you know, in your, in your steerer, have a look at that. That's number two, safety light. Get a, get a light down there and just sort of have a look for any, any flaking. If it looks suspicious, take it to your local shop. Things like that. And that's just your basic common sense. Just inspect your stuff. Drop your fork. And it takes like a 10-minute job, really. 10-minute job. Maybe less even. Yeah. Hey, put, put a podcast. Listen to the Duran Rider podcast. I do have a podcast up now. Type in Duran Rider. Any podcast. Apple, Google, iTunes, Podbean. You know, your mum's podcast or whatever. Anchor. It's all in there. So there you go. That's just simple, simple things to do. You can use a... You can get, get special in spling and get a park tools carbon steerer cutter thing there. But I do, I do recommend using the guide. You know, it does, does make a cleaner job. Then get a bit of sandpaper and just sort of smooth it off there and file it in so the fibers aren't getting splayed out. You want to file it in. And also another tip while we're at it, if you, th if you think I've left any tips out, let me know down below, man. Give me some, give me some harsh criticism. This is not a bad idea. Put your finger in your stem and just feel if it's got any sharp edges to it, all right? Any sharp edges, that feels pretty good. And if you do come across a sharp edge from the factory, get a little bit of sandpaper, fine sandpaper, and just sand it out. You put your finger in there and then just sand it, and just smooth it out, all right? Just, just take like half a mil or a nanometer off. Just take that sharp edge off. And that why we want to do that is that it's less chance of it cutting in to the carbon fibers, all right? So those fibers, the carbon fibers like to be all basically like little fingers, little sheets, and they like to be like just tightly in, tight in there, right? And so if you're you know, breaking them up, they can sort of come loose, there's gaps, there's voids opening up and stuff like that. So it's just a little bit of basic carbon care. Carbon is very strong if you look after it, and uh, if you just, yeah, just little things like that. Don't think, don't rely on the factory to do the work for you, because it's human error, it's robot error, mistakes happen. Next video, we'll talk about carbon handlebars, yay or nay. Uh, for most people, I'd say nay. Some people are okay. For lightweight riders, they're all right. If you're a big person, heavy person, or aggressive person, I'd probably stick with alloy bars. But that's another video in itself. If you have any comments or questions about this one, leave them down below. Uh, any experiences, you know, whatever, man. Just let us know down below. If you think I'm totally fucking wrong on anything in this video, let's start a debate down there. Otherwise, uh, see you on the road. Stay safe. Friends don't let friends ride uncut steerers, or unless they've got deep plugs in there. And as uh, simple as that. Check out the podcast, Strava, Duran Rod on Strava, Lightweight Wheels, thanks for coming.